Coral reefs are important for many different reasons. They protect coastline from the damaging effect of wave action and the tropical storms. They provide habitats and shelter for many marine organisms and they are one of the most important part of carbon cycle in the earth. That's why they cover less than 0.1% of marine habitats. Despite having such a small portion of marine habitats, they produce 50% of carbonate calcium in the shallow water and 25% of carbonate calcium in marine sediment. The total economic value of coral reef are 100,000 until 600,000 US dollars per square kilometers per year and they have almost 797.4 billion US dollars annually benefits. 500 million people depends on coral reef for their food, work and other resource. Coral reef provide home for at least 25% of all of marine species. And very important things about coral reef, they are famous as a one of the oldest ecosystem in the earth. Coral reef are almost 500 million years old. Coral reef are dying around the world because of our actuation. A study by Wilkinson in 2008 showed that until 2008 almost 20% of the existing area of coral reef has been already lost. He predicted in the next 10 or 20 years 70% of coral reef area will be disappeared. In addition to diseases and coral bleaching damage to coral reef area every year. In fact, only 40% of all of the coral reef area in the world has good health condition and 60% of coral reef start to go out of our ecosystem forever. Our fishing, tourist activation, using ocean as a garbage depot and a lot of unauthorized activities in order to reef exploitation exposed the coral reef future in the serious risk. These anthropogenetic effects associated with global warming, ocean acidification, and created very dangerous risk to the corals. If you go to the www.co2.earth website, you can see the amount of CO2 is now 408 ppm. This amount of CO2 is more than 230 ppm above the maximum value of CO2 in the past 714,000 years ago. When I was looking for a picture about the effect of human on corals, this picture makes me sad more than others. You know, for most of our activation, we have big reason. In fact, we need food. But how about this picture? Writing name on the coral for memorization. I don't understand. Anyway, the biggest concern about coral is resulting by increase of CO2, uh, more than ocean capacity and high temperature by global warming with a lot of research showed the negative effect of global warming and ocean acidification on coral. For example, Reynold in 2003 showed that high temperature and pressure of CO2 reduced the coral calcification until 50%. Then, what is the problem? The problem is global warming, ocean acidification. And in order to resolve the problem, we need to understand it. We need to have good information about global warming scenario. And we need to understand marine animals, especially coral reef and scleractinian coral response to ocean acidification and global warming. Scleractinian coral structure response to alkalinity is one of the missing key 
that we are going to find this answer as much as possible until today for our science. Alkalinity is capacity of water to neutralize an acid. This capacity is related to the ions such as bicarbonate, carbonate and OH and micro ions including silicates, borates, ammonia, phosphate and organic bases, especially actate and propionate. Other ions such as NH2OH and HS can also be effective in alkalinity. Alkalinity is described in two forms. Total dissolved inorganic carbon, that is sum of CO2, bicarbonate and carbonate. CO2 by flowing this reaction change the water alkalinity. When guy CO2 uptake by ocean, it changes to the aqueous CO2 and then react with water and change to the acid carbonic and acid carbonic with losing hydrogen ion change to the bicarbonate and carbonate. Hydrogen ion make the seawater more acidic and in order to come back alkalinity balance, carbonate structure such as coral reef need to lose carbonate calcium in order to adjustment of seawater pH. In front of alkalinity, we have acidity. Acidity is capacity of water to neutralize bases and it is determined by some ion like acid carbonic, bicarbonate and hydrogen free ion. And we have pH also to measure of acidic or alkalinity property in a solution. It's measure the hydrogen ion activity in a solution. pH can be shown by this formula, minus logarithm of hydrogen ion. This picture interestingly explains the relationship of alkalinity, total alkalinity, pH and saturation state. It shows how CO2 can change the total alkalinity, alkalinity pH and saturation state in seawater. I will talk about saturation state in the next slides, but here I mention it a little also. In fact, the CO2 is a starter of alkalinity change in seawater. As I explained it, with uptake of CO2, the chemical balance of seawater starts to changing because acid carbonic, bicarbonate and hydrogen ion start to produce. If you remember, we told that water alkalinity is mean the sum of aqueous CO2, bicarbonate and carbonate. Total alkalinity is collection of carbonate and bicarbonate and some ion that we explain it. And pH is determined by amount of hydrogen ion. So, when CO2 react with water, we have more free hydrogen ion, and more hydrogen ion is mean more acidic condition in seawater. And saturation state is result of balance between carbonate, calcium, and carbonate calcium ions. That's why the increase of CO2 can affect on marine calcareous strongly because it took a long time to provide this suitable seawater chemistry to marine calcareous animals and even just a little change in seawater pH or saturation state it will be problematic for marine calcareous. In fact any change in alkalinity and seawater pH has to compensate with carbonate calcium, which calcareous animals provided for marine ecosystem. And finally, if everything's gonna well without having acidification problem, calcification is done by flowing this reversible reaction. Calcification consumes carbonate or bicarbonate. In fact, calcification 
with consuming 2 moles of bicarbonate produce 1 mole of carbonate calcium.